today we're talking running shoe prices. Are these items great value or are they simply ridiculously overpriced? Let's discuss. Hey guys, Ed Bud here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking running shoe prices. It's no joke that running shoe prices are only going one way and that is up. There's some stupendously priced stuff now. I mean like the Alpha Fly from Nike. £260? Seriously? It might be worth it to some people, but, but certainly in today's climate, people are just saying no. There's a lot of technology in here, but it's still a load of foam and some materials stitched together in a certain way. Is this shoe really £160 more in terms of value than the New Balance Beacon? Maybe? Foam? Rubber? Plastic? Hmm. I've looked across multiple manufacturers and models and come up with a trio of shoes from each manufacturer. So you could call it a running shoe rotation, a race shoe, a higher tempo shoe and a daily shoe. And here are my results. So we'll kick off proceedings today with the Adidas Adizero Adios Pro. This one comes in at a colossal 170 earth credits. This is their top marathon, half marathon racing shoe and the current darling of the footwear fanatics. If you can find one, of course, to buy, they're very, very difficult to find right now. Now, it's in a bit of a quandary as to what to put in for the Adidas sort of higher tempo pace shoe. Boston 9 seemed a little bit too much of a daily sort of shoe. Didn't really feel it at the chops for sort of tempo threshold sort of runs. Maybe the Adi Zero Pro, although that's only £10 cheaper at retail. The Boston's got a good dollop of versatility, though. I think I'll go Adi Zero Pro here as it's a slightly lower stack. I think that's the only shoe that really fits in that category. And as a daily shoe from Adidas, gotta be the SL20, surely. Retail's supposed to be £100 on that shoe, so we'll go with that. Rather than these discounted shoes, we'll try and go with the retail prices. So for Adidas, that gives us a grand total for the three shoes of 440 Earth credits. Quite a considerable amount there, but quite a versatile range of shoes. Different stack heights, something for all occasions. Nike next, I think we've got to go with the Vaporfly next percent. I'd say, at least for the moment, this is the top line racing shoe. At 240 Earth credits, quite a bit more expensive than that Adidas model. There's a couple of choices here that we could go for, either the Tempo next percent or the Zoomfly 3. Now you guys know that I'm not hugely keen on the Zoomfly 3, but I think we'll go with it this time at 140 Earth credits. Still gonna be snappy, not too heavy, certainly a little lighter than the Tempo Next Percent. And for the daily staple, surely the Pegasus 37. Again, not my favorite, but I know loads of you guys love it. So I'll include that as the daily Nike shoe, around about 110 Earth credits for that React midsole Air Zoom Beast. So a real range of artillery there from Nike. You can use those at a variety of different paces and distances. And I believe that gives us a grand total of 490 Earth credits for that trio, a substantial increase over the Adidas models. New Balance next, and it's gotta be the RC Elite. It's the top dog shoe when it comes to the New Balance in their fuel cell line, but at a steep price of 209 Earth credits. Obviously a direct training partner exists in the TC, it's quite a bit heavier with that carbon plate, but there's a whole range of different New Balance offerings that I feel could do a good job at tempo pace. I think for today's video, I'll probably select the Fuel Cell Rebel, actually. You can pick these up for around about £120 retail. It's snappy, and it'll work for those faster-paced tempo miles or some threshold efforts. Not sure I'd want to use it on intervals, though. Just feels weird when you're running that shoe slowly. A daily shoe is required now from New Balance. What have we got? The Beacon Screams versatility and cushion. And I think for daily purposes, around about 100 Earth credits, spot on. So some reasonable versatility again from those three shoes. And aside from the typically difficult to get hold of racer, widely available. I believe that's a grand total of 429 Earth credits. Socony next. And I think the race shoe's got to be the Endorphin Pro. A serious carbon payload here, and it's going to set you back 190 Earth credits. Obviously, you've got a direct training partner there in the Endorphin Speed. I don't think we can really go for anything else other than that. That's going to set you back another 155 Earth credits. Nylon plate in there and the same mid sulfo. Why don't we just call it a hat trick of endorphin shoes here and choose the shift as the daily option. I found those round about 105 earth credits, although I believe the retail's a little bit more. There's quite a stack in the shift, won't you know? So I think that gives us an overall price of 475 earth credits if we go with the proper retail price of the shift. 
So as you can see from those four trios of shoes, there's quite a big disparity between the top one and the rest of the chasing pack there. Obviously Nike feel that they can charge the extra cash for their top line racing shoe and people will pay it. But are people still paying the money? There seem to be an awful lot of next percents available over on the Nike website right now. Are there just too many colorways? Are there too many options? Are people being shrewd and going for some options from other manufacturers now? I mean, the Fuel Cell RC Elite's close in terms of cash, isn't it, to the next percent price? Adidas seem intent on keeping the price at around about 160, 170 for their top line shoe. And then you see less of a price difference between that top line shoe and the higher speed or training options just underneath. I mean, with Saucony, there's only about 20 or 30 pounds difference there. If you're a Nike fan, there's pretty much an Apple-like tax on top of the price, isn't there? If you want one of the top-line race shoes, you've got to pay the extra cash. Certainly looking at the price of a shoe like this or the Alpha Fly, you can certainly see why people are opting for the value options. I think the great sales of the Saucony and Dauphin Speed and also the Hoka Oni Oni Rocket X demonstrate that people want a high-performance shoe, but they don't want to pay the big bucks. They're not prepared to throw the extended Earth credits at a more expensive shoe They'd rather just put in the extended miles in their training. I think with the Adidas Adizero Adios Pro winning some podiums recently, will it coerce Nike into dropping the price of their top line shoes? I think a price difference of 70 earth credits is enough for people to stand up and take note. I mean, that's half the price of another tempo or high speed shoe that you could buy and not far off a third cheaper than the next percent. Let's not even mention the Alpha Fly. Thank goodness for value kings like Reebok and the new kids of value, Atreya. Now it does make you wonder, you can pick up like a bargain, the Beacon 1 here I got for £40 and yet it's made of similar stuff to the Adizero Adios Pro here that was £170. Is there really that much markup in a running shoe? Then I guess you've got to consider how much profit do these companies actually make out of running shoes? I would assume that casual and leisure shoes probably make more money for those companies over the course of a year. I mean, nobody's going to wander down the street wearing this, are they? Well, I suppose some people might. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Time for a quick musical interlude. Released back in 2006, Yours to Keep by Albert Hammond Jr. is worth checking out. Albert Hammond Jr. was a guitarist, or still is, a guitarist in The Strokes. And this interesting short little album's really worth a listen. Really nice, beautiful guitar tones and melodies here. And interesting delivery from Albert Hammond. Doesn't sound exactly like you think he will. In Transit and Everybody Gets a Star are both great tracks, but I like the Strokesy-esque 101. And the last track on the album, Hard to Live in the City, is a real good one too. Nice simple arrangements here. Does remind me a little bit of Buddy Holly. I think he was a big influence on Albert Hammond Jr. Certainly his early stuff. Do go and check this one out. Back from 2006, Yours to Keep by Albert Hammond Jr. Okay, it's time for me to mosey off into the sunset. Thanks for sticking with me till the very end, guys. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos. It does help the channel out a huge amount if you give this video a thumbs up like and share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.